Hello, in this video we're going to continue to look at uniform distributions and we're going to look at some applications of them, real world situations here. So here's an exercise. Suppose a bus company claims that its buses never uh, leave a stop before the scheduled time, but are sometimes late. They also claim that in the afternoon the amount that they leave late is uniformly distributed and the buses are never more than 10 minutes late. Let's assume that their claims are true. Obtain a formula and graph for the PDF for x equals the number of minutes the bus is late. What is the probability the bus leaves within three minutes of the scheduled time? Illustrate this probability on the graph of the PDF. And what's the probability the bus will be more than six minutes late? Illustrate this probability on a graph of the PDF. Okay, well, uh, by what they've said here, this is a uniform distribution. And it's uniform between 0 and 10. So 0 is here, 10 is here. Uh, this is somewhat reasonable. I mean, it's reasonable that this would, would be 0 to the left is, of 0 because uh, if, they, if, if it's, uh, x is negative, that means they leave before they are scheduled. And it seems reasonable that if they just arrived early, they might just wait until the scheduled time to leave the stop. So that might be reasonable that, that it would be 0 there. Uh, now, it's a little bit more suspect that they're never more than 10 minutes late and that this is uniform in between. But if we assume their claims are true, then the graph, PDF graph, is 0 to the left of 0. And uh, y is 0 to the where for x is less than 0. And if x is greater than 10, y is also 0 on the PDF graph. And in between, we have a horizontal line. Now, notice that that makes this rectangle here uh, have an area of 1. It has a width of 10, so it has a height of 1 tenth. 1 tenth times 10, base times height, uh, is uh, 1 for the area, which is the total probability. So the, the formula is PDF of x equals 1 tenth, or 0.1, for x is from 0 to 10, 0 otherwise, and there's the graph. This is for the PDF. So what's the probability that the bus leaves within three minutes of the scheduled time? That that's goes up to three minutes before the uh, scheduled time or up to three minutes after, which would be the probability that x is between negative three and three. Uh, but x can't be less than zero in this particular scenario. So this is the same as the probability that x is between zero and three. Okay, well, that's just the area of this rectangle here, which has a width of three. Three minus zero is three and a height of 1 tenth, so that's just 3 tenths, 0 0.3, 30%. What's the probability the bus will be more than 6 minutes late? Well, that's from 6 up to 10, because they said you can't be more than 10 minutes late. There's no area out here to worry about. So it actually just stops at 10. So it's 6 to 10 here is our, is our base, which is a base of uh, 4. 10 minus 6 is 4. And again, it's a height of 1 tenth, so it's 4 times 1 tenth is 4 tenths, 0.4. 40% or a reduced fraction, that's two-fifths. All right, let's do another example. An automated latte dispenser always dispenses between 7.8 fluid ounces and 8.2 fluid ounces. All values between this are equally likely. Let x be the amount of latte dispensed. What type of distribution does x have? And obtain a formula and graph for the PDF of this distribution. Come back when you have it worked out. Press pause now. Well, it says right here, uh, all values between these two numbers are equally likely, so that is a uniform distribution. Outside of that, it's zero. So it's uniform from 7.8 to 8.2. So we would call that a uniform variable on 7.8 to 8.2, or just a uniform 7.8, 8.2. And the graph looks like this. To the left of 7.8, the, the uh, height is zero. To the right of 8.2, the height is 0, and in between we have some height here uh, so that we make a little rectangle, and this is a horizontal uh, constant function in between. Uh, 8.2 down to 7.8, or 7.8 to 8.2 is 8.2 minus 7.8, which is 0.4, or 4 tenths. And so the, the height is 1 over that, which would be reciprocal, 10 fourths. 10 fourths reduces to 5 halves, or 2.5. So either 5 halves in fraction or 2.5 in decimal. Generally speaking, it's better to use fractions here uh, because the fractions are going to be exact values and you don't want to round off in the middle of a calculation. However, 5 halves and 2.5 uh, are exactly the same thing. 
So uh, and this terminates pretty quickly. So the decimal is pretty good here as well. So there's a height of 2.5, which you see is what I have graphed here. And we can find some probabilities now. Okay, so what's the probability that the machine will dispense more than 8.05 fluid ounces? Illustrate it on this graph and then uh, compute that value. Press pause when you're done. Well, what we're talking about here, when we have a PDF graph of any continuous distribution, we're talking about an area being a probability. So the area specifically that we're looking for here is the area of this shaded rectangle. So the base goes from 8.05 to 8.2, which is uh, 0.15. And its height is, again, uh, 2.5. So it's 0.15 times 2.5 is 0.375 or 3 eighths, 37.5%. Could be expressed in any of those forms. And we get that. Notice that basically each one of these little bars here, because the way I've got this set up, is 1 eighth. Um, from here to here is 0.05 from the 8.05 to 8.1 is 0 0.05 and the height is 2.5. 0 0.05 times 2.5 is 0.125 which is 1 8. And you can see that also because this total area is 1 and each of these bars is 1 8, 2 8. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of those vertical strips. So each one of those is 1 8 of the total. So you can kind of see that as 1 8 pretty easily on this particular scale. So we see probability is area under the PDF graph. Okay, what about the probability it will dispense between 7.9 and 8.05? Well, now the, now the rectangle goes from 7.9 to 8.05. Uh, still a total of 3 eighths for the entire, uh, entire area because that rectangle and that one that we just had are the same size. They're the same width and all those rectangles will be the same height for this particular distribution. And notice this is a special property of uniform distributions that any interval the same width will have the same probability for a specific, uh, specific uh, uniform distribution. Alright, let's try another one. <clears throat> this is a pretty realistic situation I think. Um, a machine produces an 18-inch long metal cylindrical spindle. 1% of the time, the machine places a gouge in the spindle. This makes the spindle unusable for the original purpose. However, if there's a 15-inch section free of the gouge of gouges, the spindle can be cut back to 15 inches and used for another purpose. Otherwise, they might have to uh, maybe just melt the whole thing down and start over. Now assume that the location of the gouges are uniformly distributed through the length of the spindle. See if you can answer these questions. What is the probability of the machine producing a spindle that has a gouge? What's the probability of salvaging a 15-inch spindle given that the original spindle had a gouge? What's the probability of having a spindle that is totally unusable given that it has a gouge? And what's the probability of having a spindle that is unsalvageable? Okay, see if you can work out those. Think about this one for a little bit and then come back. Press pause now. Well, um, the probability that the machine produces a spindle that has a gouge is, is told to you right here. It's 1% or 0 0.01. But, and then this, this uh, the probability of uh, salvaging this, this is a conditional probability. So we know that it has a gouge and we know that if it has a gouge, then the, the, the position of that gouge, say from the left end, is a uniform distribution. So uh, if we start at the left end, then the gouge could be anywhere from 0 to 18, which is the length of the uh, original spindle, and it could be anywhere along here. Now what I have shaded in red are the places that were within 3 inches of each end. Okay, So if it's within 3 inches of either end and it only has gouges in those sections, then we can cut it in such a way that, uh, well, if it only has one gouge in one of these regions, not both, but one of the regions, then we'll still have a total of at least 15 inches that we can cut and make a 15-inch section and salvage it. So to, 
to be salvaged, there must be the it must be in one of these shaded regions. So uh, since it's uniform, this goes from zero to eighteen. So the height is one eighteenth. Okay, and so the probability that we're in the first three uh, inches. Okay, is going to be uh, 3 eighteenths. So it's 3 inches long here times 1 eighteenth tall is 3 eighteenths. Now, it's also 3 eighteenths that's in the other end. So add those together. There's 6 eighteenths that we will get something, uh, which by the way, 6 eighteenths is one third or 33.3 .3 repeating percent. So one third of the time, if, you, if it actually has a gouge, then it will have... Uh, it will be be able to be salvageable. So, what's the probability of uh, having a spindle that is totally unsalvageable, given that it has a gouge? That's going to be um, well, one minus what we just said there. So, it's one minus one third is two thirds is the probability of having a totally unusable spindle, given that it has a gouge. Now, notice that is a conditional probability. That's the probability of unsalvageable, given that we know that it has a a gouge. What's the probability of having a spindle that is completely unsalvageable then? That's the probability that it's unsalvageable uh, and has a gouge, right? So it has a gouge and then we can't, it does not have a, and it does not have a 15 inch uh, ungouged part. So that's probability of gouge times the probability of unsalvageable given the gouged, which is 100th times 2 thirds is 1 over uh, 150 or about 6.67 percent so about one out of every 150 items they've got where it's completely unsalvageable either as a 15 or an 18 inch uh, spindle now maybe they can melt it down and do something else with it but that's about as far as we can go with that okay so that gives you some examples of some uniform distributions and we're going to work the next couple of videos, continue to work with uniform distributions and see if there's something that we could come up with a connection to the CDF from them.